we're here in our sheep pasture to uh, talk about a really interesting issue that's being explored quite skillfully on online and that is the connection between uh, soil and uh, global warming. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Chip and I plan to be doing a lot more uh, videos for you. If you like them, please click on like and click on subscribe and click on the bell so that you'll be notified every Sunday when we uh, post our new videos. There are disagreements uh, about global warming. Um, there doesn't uh, seem to be disagreement that we are experiencing uh, destructive changes to the climate and that there is a buildup of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Mostly, uh, lots of sources of it, uh, but probably because of the use of fossil fuels and the burning of fossil fuels and lots of other uh, things connected to our way of life. And so we're interested in exploring ways of decreasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because most scientists believe that is a way to address uh, climate change in a very positive manner. So a fact that maybe isn't appreciated as much as it should be is that this carbon or carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can be stored in the soil. The most common way to make that happen, to get it into the soil, is to do it through plants. So when plants photosynthesize, they then pump uh, carbon into the soil for the use of microbes in the soil. So you need this soil food web to be active in the soil. Soil that's devoid of soil life, soil that's undergone uh, lots of abuse, which some of our soils have, and the, and the life has been killed off on it, won't be an effective sink for carbon. But it, a, a healthy soil can be a great sink for carbon. And when you uh, calculate the broad expanses of um, pasture land and meadow land, techniques that uh, increase uh, the ability of soil to store carbon can have a dramatic impact on the lessening of carbon in the atmosphere. So the soil food web is the key to our work. I always say that um, the way to change any kind of soil is through the soil food web. And the only way to do the soil food web is to encourage life in the soil. So have all kinds of beneficial fungi and bacteria and good protozoa and good nematodes and then a whole system of life uh, builds around that. Uh, it's very similar to life in the ocean, but the life in the soil doesn't seem to be as well appreciated as, uh, as life in the ocean. So that soil food web is key to allowing soils uh, to store carbon because it's those uh, microbes that allow the soil to store uh, the carbon. Uh, so we need to build healthy soil, the use of pesticides and chemicals and fertilizers that are high in salt is damaging to the soil food web. So the whole premise, encouraging life in the soil and, and using measures to get that carbon into the soil and if the soil is lively and healthy and fertile that it can actually be stored there for a long, long time. It's really incredible how long it can be stored there through the healthy growth of plants. regenerative and degenerative are references to the soil because that's the key to sequestering the carbon dioxide that we don't want to be in our atmosphere. So regenerative uses uh, a whole range of uh, methods, some uh, built around, uh, we're in this uh, sheep pasture and you'll see online uh, pastures of all kinds of livestock properly managed can be a really excellent way of regenerative agriculture. If they're managed properly and they're not overgrazed and um, all the techniques are used properly like you'll see in uh, Kiss the Ground, regenerative versus degenerative is the same thing we're talking about in our horticulture 
uh, use of our products where degenerative is more the traditional way that a lot of people have been gardening where they rely on synthetic products to feed their plants. Those synthetic products damage the soil. That's degenerative horticulture. They damage the soil and then that makes all the plants more subject to pest and disease. When they get pest and disease uh, you have to use more pesticides and those pesticides degenerate the soil even more. And so uh, the, the idea is we're going to focus on regenerative ideas. And if you regenerate the soil, those, uh, that life in the soil is the best mechanism soil has to prevent and defeat every pest and disease there is. All of our methods are built around building that life. In other words, we're not going to till, we're going to use organic products, we're going to use products that microbes like, that earthworms like. All of that is regenerative and we're going to stay away from degenerative things like constant tilling, uh, pesticides and chemicals of any kind which damage soil life. So when I watched uh, Kiss the Ground it brought to mind exactly what we're doing in horticulture. They're talking more about agriculture because those huge areas, broad expanses of acres are where you can really store a lot of carbon. But you as individuals each have your own little footprint where you can store carbon and you can do that by this style of gardening that really the neat thing about it is it's a better way to garden. You'll have more success with your crops, with your lawn, with your trees because that is a more effective way to garden. You'll see the vitality of the plants is increased, uh, the need for water is decreased, uh, the, the pressure on pests and diseases is much uh, decreased. It's a much more sustainable way to garden. Uh, it will even impact uh, global warming which is going to the ultimate and uh, you'll uh, have a lot more success with everything you do in terms of growing things around your home. Hey there friends, thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the bell. Want to learn more about our products? Then head over to our website www.johnandbobs.com Dot com.